I started designing watches back in 1986. These were some of the first watches that I designed. Not only designed, but of course built myself. So, you know, very, very intricate sketches, uh, detailed sketches. And, and these pictures are life size as well. Very difficult to say, but if I put my hand there, you can see that um, the watch is absolutely immense. So, this really predated the trend for large watches by about a decade. <laughs> Of course, clocks as well. I've designed various clocks. This was a thing called the Mystery Clock in 1989. I was working with carbon fiber pretty early on, um, do, doing all the molding myself, using venturi pumps and things to lay out the carbon into a mold. A little bit of jewelry and lots of watches over the years with the company that I created called IcePod. who sadly I have no more involvement with since about uh, six months. But uh, again, you know, I created this company back uh, in the mid-90s, um, designed really lots and lots of timepieces. Almost all went into production in one way or another. This was the last design that I did for IcePod. Uh, and then back to jewellery again, actually, I started, it was approached by a company called Boucheron, a Paris big jewellery manufacturer, famous jewellery manufacturer, and I designed a, 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 a necklace which is based, based on fractal theory, a, a part, a, you know, a type of fractal theory, actually, it was based on a thing called the Julia set, which is a subset of the Mandelbrot set. Um, and some more, uh, probably, the most successful timepieces that I've designed were for a company called Jaeger Le Coutre in Switzerland. Um, and these are called Atmos clocks. And they are large clocks which run, uh, are almost sort of self uh, perpetual in, in a way because they power themselves. They're based on, um, they're powered by small differences in temperature. So you never have to wind them. It's quite a famous clock and loads of pictures of me in the factory and stuff. I had a lot of fun doing these things. But these were big, very expensive objects, but, but really, really fun because um, working, with, working with people like uh, Jaeger Le Coutre, who are, you know, they're, you know, they're absolute kind of experts in their field. You couldn't hope to work with anyone better. So um, I work with such a a broad range of different types of people. Some are great, some are not so great. And uh, these guys are great. They really do what they do incredibly well. And, and for a designer, that's always such a, a relief. That you're not going to have to bang heads with people. And I stand corrected. The actual, the, the last piece I designed for iPod wasn't a watch. It was a, an hourglass which is really an odd thing because it's not particularly accurate, but maybe one of the most successful products I designed for iPod, <laughs> bizarrely.